everyone, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to share a quick video with all of you. So this is to show you what we'll be doing with our sinking funds for 2018. So what I've done here is I've created a uh, spreadsheet kind of workbook in Excel. And at the bottom here, you'll see there's emergency fund 52 week for the 52 week challenge, Costco, and there's quite a few more tabs. So I'm going to go through all of them and show you what they are. So the first one you see here is the $1,000 emergency fund that Dave Ramsey says to save. So you'll see starting in October, uh, I put in what our opening balance was. We had fully funded it by November. Then we had to use some, um, and then I put back another 100, or no, I took out 100, and then I put back the 100, so we're fully funded again. So this is just to show what our emergency fund looks like. Next, the 52 week challenge. I don't know if any of you have seen this, but basically what you do is every week you save the amount of money that equals to that week. So for example, week one, I would save $1. Then week two, I would put aside $2 and then so on. And then I would keep a running total or not there. I would keep a running total in the balance column. So ideally, if I can keep up with this till next December, I should reach $1,378. And this money is not um, specifically set for anything right now, um, just to have that extra money. So my husband and I, we can decide later what we wanna put this money towards, but for now, this is what we're going to do. So this will start on January 1st. Next, we have a Costco membership. So I showed that in my budget in yesterday's video that um, because we saved a bit of money with our rent and utilities, I was able to put $146.54 towards our Costco membership. If I remember correctly, the membership is $150 for the one that we have. So I'm just a couple dollars short um, for that. So that should be fully funded in no time. Then I have gymnastics classes for my youngest daughter. She has to or we have to essentially sign her up for classes every three months because the sessions are only three months long for now until she gets into a higher level of gymnastics. So it's usually between 180 and $225 or so, but I figured I'd shoot for 250, uh, that way it's covered. So we've already paid for January, February, March. So she's good for that session. So this is to stay for the April, June, July session. Next is my um, oldest daughter's first communion. So I've already gotten the dress. Now all we need to do is uh, pay for the alterations on the dress, get the shoes, the veil, um, photos, hair, and then a small haul just for us to have a, a little get together after the first communion. So my goal is $1,000 to save for that. And nothing's been put in yet, but we'll get there. Next is for birthdays for my kids. So saving for birthday parties, that kind of thing. So my goal is $2,000. Next, Jellystone Park in Niagara Falls. We like to do this once a year as a family. We weren't able to last year. Um, the budget was just too tight. So I'm hoping that if I can budget for it this time and put the money aside, that we can save up to go to Jellystone this year. So yeah, hoping for $1,200 to go for about four days. Then school costs, already thinking for next September. So school costs, I put $1,000. That will include the pizza lunches that we have to pre-order in September, um, you know, the indoor shoes, the outdoor shoes, the, I guess, the registration fee. It's not really a registration fee, but there's a, I, I guess, a supplies fee. But we have to pay a small fee per year. I think it's $60 this year per child. So put that aside then this hopefully will also include winter boots because we're in you know the northern part of the hemisphere so it gets cold so we need winter boots so put a thousand dollars towards that then we have Christmas fund so I've put a goal of fifteen hundred dollars I don't think I would spend that much but I'd rather have more and not use it all than not enough so that's where that is Okay, so the next one is a car fund. So my husband does need a car. We do need to get him a car. I would like to cash flow this as much as possible. 
Um, so I've put a goal of $3,000 just to get a little old beater car. The reason for this is um, taking public transit works for the most part. However, being a supply teacher, a lot of the jobs that he could take, he would need to be on a bus for two to two and a half hours one way just to get to a school. Um, so he's often having to turn down some of the jobs because they're just too far. There's no way he could get there um, that early in the morning on a two to two and a half hour bus ride. So hopefully with a small car, um, he'll be able to accept more jobs and we'll be able to, you know, get more money that way. So hopefully this will work out. Next car maintenance, just general car maintenance, oil changes, brake fixing tires, that kind of thing. So I put a goal of $2,000. Then I have FSL part two online course. So this is for me specifically, and it's for the French as a second language online course part two. And this is what's called an additional qualification. So I am qualified to teach French. I am a Francophone, so I do speak French, but because I didn't do my undergrad studies in university in French, um, they don't accept that to bump me up in the pay grid. So I need to take the FSL part two course, and then I need to take the honor specialist course so that I can get bumped up on the pay grid. So this is working towards, I guess, a promotion at work, if you will. So I'm hoping to take this course. It's $800 to take the online course. So hopefully I can take that sometime soon so that I can move up a little bit. Uh, and then lastly, is this one and I don't want to mention it out loud just because the kids are around so hopefully I would like to do this sometime in 2019 maybe 2020 at the latest just so that my kids are young enough but old enough so that they can appreciate it and then there's still that magic there so I've set aside a goal of five thousand dollars that's not a lot I mean we are coming from Canada we're hoping to drive down to Florida. And I have a friend who has a timeshare there in Florida. So she would let us use her timeshare free of charge. So hopefully this would be enough for all of us to get into the park and get some food, that kind of thing. So hopefully that's that. And then the last tab I have here are totals. So it says savings account running total. And that's because the money that I'm putting into these categories, I'm putting into one account. And a lot of the people that I've watched on YouTube that have sinking funds or electronic sinking funds, they have separate accounts in their bank. Uh, they'll have one that's specifically for birthdays, one for Christmas, one for car fund, that kind of thing. I can do that with my bank. I did look it up. However, with every new account that I open, the interest rate is lower. So I figured if I put everything that I'm saving up for into one account that has a higher interest rate, I will get more interest from the entire amount altogether. And then as long as I keep this sheet up to date, I'll know what money is for what, so that I shouldn't be dipping into any other, you know, amounts, let's say. So hopefully this works just because I think it's just easier and it's, it, it benefits us more to have it all in one account where the interest will go higher. So hopefully that will work. So that is a quick look at our electronic sinking funds for 2018. I hope you kind of have a nice idea of how sinking funds work. I hope this gives you an idea of maybe things you could set up for your own budget. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And remember to like and subscribe if you're new. And I will see you in my next video. Thanks, everyone. Bye.